We are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Yesterday we heard one very important instruction Shukadev Goswami told. O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge, means Atmaramas. So it will be success for all if they can, in following authorities, means in Anugatya, chant the name constantly. Or like Srila Siddhar Maharaj told, if someone takes sincerely the name, then he can cross over this Maya and all sufferings attached to it and can attain transcendental, eternal, loving service of Krishna, of absolute bliss he can get. This is the process, the, this we have to do, that is main thing. Other things in Kali Yuga, Jiva Goswami told, may be done. Other devotional forms may be done. They are not prohibited, but they also have to be done with Harinam Sankirtan, not without. That is why before Srimad Bhagavatam, we sing Kirtan. After Srimad Bhagavatam, we sing Kirtan. During Diti worship, we sing Kirtan. During, uh, we, in, in association with sadhus, do Kirtan. And also when you worship Diti, then also you have to, at the end, chant Maha Mantra always. So all forms of devotion which are there, they have to be done with Namas and Kirtan in this Kali Yuga. Otherwise, they will not be effective. So, after Harikata also necessary, the Kirtan is necessary. And it is for all. Because devotion is natural for the every Jiva soul because of her eternal relation with Krishna. So it is for all. Here, Srila Sai Maharaj is explaining in uh, yes. Here it is mentioned that one should constantly chant the holy name of the Lord after hearing it from authorities. This means that hearing from the authorities means bona fide guru is the first essential. Hearing of the holy name gradually promotes one to the stage of hearing about his forum, about his attributes, his pastimes, and so on. And thus the necessity of the chanting of his glories develops successively. Yes. This process is recommended not only for the successful execution of devotional service, but also even for those who are materially attached. According to Shukadev Goswami, this way of attaining success is an established fact, concluded not only by him, but also by all other previous charges. Therefore, there is no need of further evidence. Uh, so, Shri Shukadev Goswami recommends the transcendental chanting of the holy name of the Lord. 
By offenseless chanting and hearing of the holy name of the Lord, one becomes acquainted with the transcendental form of the Lord, and then with the attributes, then with transcendental nature of his pastimes, etc. Everything will be revealed from chanting. Here, Srila Jiva Gosam instructs that chanting of the holy name of the Lord should be loudly done and it should be performed offenselessly as well, as recommended in the Padma Puran. Based on this, Srila Bhakti Sena also gave three explanations of Sankirtan. One is this, when many devotees, they gather and in unison, they loudly chant holy name, like Mahaprabhu did with his associates. Another meaning is with, without offenses and uh, also Samyak means completely Nam Rup Gun Lila we have to chant and it will automatically come from offenseless chanting. One can deliver himself from the effects of all sins by surrendering himself unto the Lord. One can deliver himself from all offenses at the feet of the Lord by taking shelter of his holy name. But one cannot protect himself if one commits an offense at the feet of the holy name of the Lord. If you commit offense to Diti or directly to Supreme Lord, then if you constantly with great regret you chant Harinam, you can be freed from that offense. But if you commit that offense to Harinam, then uh, you have to chant constantly here, Srila Sai Maharaj is then uh, quoting which are the ten offenses to the holy name. Uh, there are ten. Seven. Oh, let me see how. He explained the ninth one. Yes. The ninth offense is to instruct those who are not interested in chanting the holy name of the Lord about the transcendental nature of the holy name. If such instruction is imparted to an unwilling audience, the act is considered to be an offense at the feet of the holy name. So first you have to create faith in them by speaking Harikata or engaging them in some service or hearing Shastra like this, when they will develop faith in Krishna, only then you are allowed to tell them about holy name, means initiate them into holy name. Otherwise it will be offense if you try to impart this to those who are Faithless. There it is written in Jeva Dharma 24th chapter about Nama Paradas. He said that those who are Uttamadikaris, Bhakti Thakur said there, those who are Uttamadikaris, they have such power that they can create faith in other Jivas by their presence. Uh, but Madhyamadikari gurus, they are also there because always gurus, always they are acting on Madhyam platform. Even Uttamadikari has to come to play the pastimes of Madhyamadikari to give initiation because in his own realization of Uttam, he does not, he cannot instruct anyone. He sees everyone is serving Krishna directly or indirectly. But Madhya Madhikari has that type of discrimination. He has love for Supreme Lord 
he has friendship with devotees. He is merciful to those who are jivas, innocent, ignorant. He is merciful to them. And he avoids those who are against. So there Bhakti Thakur told that as long as you remain in Madhya Madhikar, you should avoid those who are faithless. They cannot act like Uttamadikaris. There is a difference. The Uttamadikaris have more strength. So you can speak Harikata, you can give prasad like this, and then see whether they will become interested, whether they can have faith in what you are saying like this, or Nagar Sankirtan you do and some will approach with faith like this, then you can instruct. But otherwise, forcefully, uh, you should not, it will be offense, or for to give initiation to some uh, out of greed for some name and fame money or like this, or like not telling rules and regulations, thinking otherwise they will not accept me. So they're saying you can eat whatever you like. You can drink what, what you want, you can do. So that is not service to ho holy name. It is offense to holy name. So this is ninth offense. And you know the ten, tenth one. But so there in Padma Puran also it is written that if someone committed any of these offenses, he should uh, regret and he should correct that by the proper procedure. You will find in Harinam Chintamani Bhakti Thakur, he described about positive, how what one has to do if some if committed certain offense, and also one has to constantly chant Harinam, constantly with surrender. Then all offenses will be uh, rectified except for Vaishnava Aparat, but Harinam will let you know that you did Vaishnava Aparat and what you have to do. Either in general glorify all Vaishnavas in songs like this, like Mahaprabhu told, and then your attitude towards Vaishnavas will change. Or Harina will show you, you committed offense to this particular Vaishnava and to him you have to go and beg forgiveness. Like Narayan told to Durvasarishi, you have to go to Ambarishi. So Harina will show that if someone will constantly and sincerely chant. Kim Pramatasya Bahubi Parokshair Hayaner Iha Varam Muhurtam Viditam Ghatate Shriya Seyata. What is the value of a prolonged life which is wasted, inexperienced by years in this world? Better a moment of full consciousness, because that gives one a start in searching after his supreme interest. Yes, this is the point. Generally, means conditioned souls, they think ultimate goal is survival and sense enjoyment. And the most undesirable thing is suffering and death. So they are trying very hard to avoid death for themselves and also they want to protect others. That is the ultimate bad. But for devotees, they are not calculating based on this. Because they know what is the use of having very long life if it is wasted for sense enjoyment only. Or even worse, for continuing sinful activities. That is why they kill those uh, snakes and scorpions like this, they kill 
because or you should not give milk to snake you are only feeding her wrong activities so they are not calculating based on i am body so what is good for body that is good what is bad for body is bad they are not on that platform of calculation devotees or i am mind and intellect so intellectual and mental development is what is good that is good what is bad for this is bad but in sanatan goswami shiksha he revealed this he said first you please tell me mahaprabhu who i am i don't know who i am if i don't know who i am then how can there be good for me so guru our gurudev explained that the termination of self is most important otherwise you will miss what is in your benefit and what is not if you will think i am this body you will calculate bodily and everything will be uh, will be sacrificed for that but devotees they are even sacri- they are even ready to sacrifice their body for the service of krishna but condition shows they are not that is main thing body is main thing or for some rare mind is main thing but for devotees they know the soul's uh, benefit is the main thing even at the cost of bodily and mental uh, some sacrifice I mean some pain they are ready to some dif- they are ready to accept that. for the sake of spiritual benefit so here shukadev goswami only realized soul can speak like this and they are well established in ac- action of this practical life they have like that he said what is the value of prolonged life prolonged life which is wasted wasted in only sense gratification sinful activity yes better a moment of full consciousness because that gives one a start in searching after his supreme interest like a seed is that seed of the ocean then you will search for what is my real benefit and yes here she, in commentary Shila Shukadev Goswami instructed Maharaj Parikit about the importance of the chanting of the holy name of the Lord by every progressive gentleman in order to encourage the king who had only seven remaining days of life Shila Shukadev Goswami asserted that there is no use in living hundreds of years without any knowledge of the problems of life better to live for a moment with full consciousness of the supreme interest to be fulfilled the supreme interest of life is eternal with full knowledge and bliss yes those who are bewildered by the external features of the material world and are engaged in the animal propensities of the eat drink and be merry type of life are simply wasting their lives by the unseen passing away of valuable years we should know in perfect consciousness that human life is bestowed upon the conditioned soul to achieve spiritual success and the easiest possible procedure to attain this end is to chant the holy name of the lord in the previous verse we have discussed this point to a certain extent and we may further be enlightened on the different types of offenses committed unto the feet of the holy name yes here again this 10 offenses are explained 
Yes. And then if one should therefore utilize one life in glorifying the Lord by all means without any offense. Such activity of life, even for a moment, is never to be compared to a prolonged life of ignorance. So this depends on the determination of self, how one will calculate what is valuable, what is not, and what he will be ready to sacrifice for what. Katvango namara jarshir gyatveyatam ihayushah muhurtat sarvam utsridja gatavam abhayam harim. Yes. The saintly king Katvanga, after being informed that the duration of his life would be only a moment more, at once freed himself from all material activities and took shelter of the supreme safety, the personality of Godhead. How Sai Maharaj, he translated Abhayam. Gatavan Abhayam Hari, supreme safety. We are all afraid and we are always trying to protect ourselves. But supreme, that is all, it will not work. Time will take away everything. But taking shelter of Supreme Lord, that is actual supreme safety. His real father, mother, and omnipotent, and his proprietor of everything, not only of some uh, millions of dollars or euros or something, which may be gone with time, means will be, but Krishna is the owner of everything, actual owner. We are posing to be owners, but he's actual owner. So if your father, Krishna, is the owner of everything, then what is the problem? And he's omnipotent and he's affectionate. If you become his child, then where is there any problem? That is supreme safety. So here, Shukadev Goswami gave example of Katanga Raja. I told before, he was fighting on the side of demigods and they defeated demons. Then demigods were happy with him and they wanted to give him many things, weapons, fame, health, wife, uh, car or whatever he wants. He said, how long I will live? They said, one moment. Then what is the use of all these things? You rescue me from that. They said, we cannot. Only Vishnu can do. Immediately he left demigods, took shelter of Vishnu. In one moment, he got perfection. He was liberated from Maya and got service of Krishna because he sincerely in one moment he surrendered. So Shukadeva Goswami is here giving the importance on the quality, not quantity of time. I may live very long, that is very good. I should not die. No, that is not the importance. Importance is how you spend your life. For what? If you do Service of Krishna, that is the only valuable spending of time. And you will get eternal benefit. Even if for a moment you do, that will stay, that will go with you. But all other things, there is no value. Yes. Here, Sai Maharaj telling, Maharaj Katanga is mentioned herein as a saintly king 
because even within the responsibility of the state management, he was not at all forgetful of the prime duty of life. Hmm. Yes. Maharaj Parikit was thus encouraged by the great Shukadev Goswami, even though he had only seven days left in his life to execute the prime duty of hearing the glories of the Lord in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. By the will of the Lord, Maharaj Parikit instantly met the great Shukadev Goswami and the great treasure of spiritual success left by him is nicely mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, when he submitted, immediately Krishna sent. And Parikit Maharaj sincerely performed his sadhana of hearing Shravan Bhakti, so he got perfection. There are nine forms of devotion, and you can get you can practice many or only one. Ambarish Maharaj practiced all nine, but Shukadev Goswami only one, Kirtan Bhakti, Parikit Maharaj only Shravan Bhakti, and they got perfection. But in Kali Yuga, we have to do Harinam Sankirtan, and our Gurudev also told, because there are some difficulties, there may be some difficulties in performing other forms of devotion in Kali Yuga due to disturbed environment, and so many things uh, there. But for chanting Harinam, there is no difficulty. You can do it anytime, any place, any condition, anyone, in any state, sick, healthy, poor, rich, you know, everyone can do. Only we have to call Krishna and we can get all perfection. And if we are uh, inspired to do other devotional forums, that is allowed, but you should do with Nama Sankirtan, otherwise it will have no effect. Tavapyatarhi Kauravya Saptaham Jivitavadhi Upakalpaya tat sarvam tavat yat sampara ikam. Maharaj Parikit, now your duration of life is limited to seven more days. So during this time, you can perform all those rituals which are needed for the best purpose of your next life. Anta kale tu purusha agate gata sadavasa chin diat asanga shastrena spriham dehenu ye chatam. Yes, upakalpe get them performed. Samparaikam. At the last stage of one's life, one should be bold enough not to be afraid of death, but one must cut off all attachment to the material body and everything pertaining to it and all desires thereof. Sai Maharaj is telling, the foolishness of gross materialism is that people think of making a permanent settlement in this world. Although it is a settled fact that one has to give up everything here that has been created by valuable human energy. Great statesmen, scientists, philosophers, etc., who are foolish, without any information of the spirit soul, 
that is foolishness. Think that this life of a few years only is all in all and that there is nothing more after that. This poor fund of knowledge, even in the so-called learned circles of the world, is killing the vitality of human energy. And the awful result is being keenly felt. After that, one forgets everything about the present bodily relations. We don't know who was our mother and father in previous life. Brother, sister, our which nation I was Chinese or I was American or I was in this life, I may be the enemy of the one whom I will be next life. So this is all illusion, total illusion. This uh, nationalism and enmity with others and all total illusion. So everything one forgets about the present body relations we have a little experience of this at night when we go to sleep. While sleeping, we forget everything about this body and body relations. Although this forgetfulness is a temporary situation for only a few hours. So that is nothing but sleeping for a few months in order to develop another term of bodily engagement which were aware, awarded by the law of nature according to our aspiration. Therefore, one has only to change the aspiration during the course of this present body. And for this, there is need of training in the current duration of human life. This training can be begun at any stage of life or even a few seconds before death. But the usual procedure is for one to get the training from very early life. Yes, that is better. But it is never too late. Better late than never. Immediately we have to start. And then we have to change our desires from trying to lord it over material nature to do our natural function to serve Krishna. Grihat pravrajito dhira punya tirta jala pluta shucho vivikta asino vidivat kalpitasane. So this life, human life, is meant for this to cut attachment to material body. And body relations and everything pertaining to it and all desires thereof. That is the purpose, not to increase that, but to cut and come to transcendental realization. That does not mean that you reject everything and everyone. That is not the meaning, but you have to realize uh, in proper perspective about everything about and about everyone. To whom they are related, how I am related to Krishna, how they are related to Krishna and how this matter is related to Krishna, everything this Sambandha Gyan we have to understand then there is no rejection, but proper healthy vision and healthy proper action in regard to truth. Otherwise, we are only continuing the diseased condition. One should leave home and practice self-control. In a sacred place, he should bath regularly, 
and sit down in an only place duly sanctified. Abhyasan Manasa Shuddham Trivrit Brahma Ksharam Param Mano Yache Jita Shwaso Brahma Bijam Avis Maran. After sitting in the above manner, make the mind remember the three transcendental letters Brahma Aksharam Param. Three vrit, composed of three, Brahma Aksharam. Those three transcendental syllables, they are A U M, means Om. And by regulating the breathing process, control the mind so as not to forget the transcendental seed. That here, this means Om, Vijaya. That is Vedic process. And then you have Pancharatrik and Bhagavat also Mark. In Bhagavat Mark, you chant directly primary names of Supreme Lord. Krishna, Govinda, Gopinath, Madam Mohan. In this you have to chant. Secondary names are Brahma, Paramatma, and this related to this material world. But those primary Mukya names, they are not in any way directly or indirectly related to this world. They are only related to Krishna's eternal form in his Lila and his qualities. So those names Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed us to uh, call. Parang Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. But here many things are mentioned in Bhagavatam because of different yugas, different circumstances, and everything. We, we cannot apply everything what is in Bhagavatam in the sense of form, but we have to apply it in principle, means uh, we have to apply devotion to Krishna. And according to how it is prescribed for Kali Yuga, which is also mentioned in Bhagavatam. But we cannot do like Dhruva or even like Parikit Maharaj or like this, we cannot do in Kali Yuga. That type. But we, we have to do Harinam. And Harinam is available to one. Niyachet Vishaye Bhyokshan Manasa Buddhi Sarati Manah Karma Vir Akshiptam Shubharte Dhare Dhya. Gradually, as the mind becomes progressively spiritualized, withdraw it from sense activities and by intelligence the senses will be controlled. Senses will want, I want to enjoy this, but intelligence is saying, no, that is not good. You will uh, ruin yourself. You have to engage yourself in the Krishna. That is purified intelligence. So by purified intelligence, we have to control the senses. Otherwise, if you are uncontrolled, then how you can progress in spiritual uh, development? means how you can get spiritual result. If you don't control your senses, you are, in, you are enjoying your senses and thinking, uh, I am devotee of Krishna. That is impossible. The mind too absorbed in material activities, the mind too absorbed means too much, absorbed in material Material activities can be engaged in the service of the personality of Godhead and become fixed in full transcendental consciousness. 
we have to think about Krishna and what he wants and do that, then it will be okay. Tatreka vaya vam dhyayet avyu chinena chetasa mano nirvishayam yuktva tatah kinchana nasmaret padam tat parama vishnur mano yatra prasidati. Thereafter, you should meditate upon the limbs of Vishnu one after another without being deviated from the conception of the complete body or form. Thus, the mind becomes free from all sense objects. There should be no other thing to be thought upon because the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu is the ultimate truth. The mind becomes completely reconciled in Him only. Yes. And by knowing Vishnu, you know all. You will not be deprived. No, if I will not study this, you will not the only then, then I will not know. No. The Upanishad says, by knowing whom you know everything, because he is everything. So by knowing him, you will automatically know also everything, because everything is related to him as his energy. In proper perspective, you will know everything. Otherwise, that is illusory knowledge only. You think you know, but you don't know. The actual sarup of a thing you cannot know unless you see it, how it is in relation to Krishna. If that link is not there, it is my knowledge. And it is useless. It cannot pacify you. Your mind can be pacified because you will get Satchit Ananda. Existence, knowledge and bliss you will get in Supreme Lord only. This is what we are all searching for. So your mind will be pacified or reconciled only when getting realization of Krishna. So we should not here and there like this. One point, by knowing whom you know everything. That we have to uh, work for, for that realization. Rajas tamobyam akshiptam vimudham mana atmana yache dharanaya dhiro khanti atat kritam malam. One's mind is always agitated by the passionate mode of material nature and bewildered by the ignorant mode of nature. But one can rectify such conceptions by the relation of Vishnu and thus become pacified by cleansing the dirty things created by them. That will pollute your vision. You cannot see things as they are, being influenced by Rajagun and Tamagun. Even by Satyagun you cannot fully see things as they are. By transcendental vision you can see through devotion. But from Satya it starts about eternal Atma, about Vishnu, all this. Yasyam Sandharya Manayam Yogino Bhakti Lakshana Ashu Sampadyate Yoga Ashram Badram Ikshata. O King, by this system of remembrance and by being fixed in the habit of seeing the all good personal conception of the Lord, one can very soon attain devotional service to the Lord under his direct shelter. Here, 
is all good. That is why those who have dissolved their selfish desires, they can perceive the all goodness of Krishna, that in whatever is happening, His grace is there. If I am attached to some sinful activity, like drinking wine, then if someone wants to obstruct that, then I will see him as my enemy. Although that person may want to help me for my own health, his intention is good to help me. But because I am bewildered, I think, no, this I want. This is my necessity. If someone giving obstruction, I will see as an enemy. Like that, when I have selfish desires, I cannot see how Krishna is actually doing everything for my good. I would think, no, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is incorrect, everything is uh, wrong, everything is wrong. That is just the opposite. I am seeing like this, experiencing because of my own selfishness. Krishna is all good. What he is doing, it is for my eternal welfare. But it obstructs my selfish enjoyment, so I think everything is bad. I am good, everything is bad. This, this thinking is there. But he is all good, personal. Badram. A badram means bad. Bhadram, all good, Krishna. That is why they can see the grace of Krishna behind everything. And like Srila Siddhar Maharaj told, those who, who have no selfish motives, they are seeing everything is good. What is happening, they are always getting good news from the environment. Environment is given by Krishna to rectify us. But we don't like to be rectified. Then we think, no, that is not good. So that is why we cannot see the grace of Krishna. As someone like drunkard he cannot see the help of that person who wants to prevent him. He does not see. He sees he is my enemy. Cannot see otherwise. Like that, we think Krishna is our enemy. He is trying to take us out from suffering and give us eternal bliss, but we think he is enemy. He is obstructing my uh, desire, fulfillment of my desires. He is very cruel. So, but one has purific one needs purification of mind to see the all good personal conception of the Lord. Such a person can very soon attain devotional service to the Lord under his direct chapter, means on transcendental death platform in that real. Rajovach Yatha Sandhariate Brahman Brahman Dharana Yatra Samata Yadrishiva Haritashu Purushasya Manomala. The fortunate king Parikit inquiring further said O Brahmana, please describe in full detail how and where the mind has to be applied and how the conception can be fixed so that the dirty things in a person's mind can be removed. So now again, Shukadev Goswami will start to explain certain practice which is bona fide, but according to time, place, circumstance. 
for us beginning and middle and end is to chant Harinam with attention, with sincerity, with surrender, under the guidance of bona fide guru. Through this process, we will get all these effects of Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, all this. Shri Shuka Uvach. Jitasano Jita Shwaso, Jita Sango Jitendriya, Stule Bhagavato Rupe, Manah San Dharayet Dhiya. Shukadeva Goswami answered, one should control the sitting posture by asana one has to first practice so that he can get that stable asana comfortable for him that is helpful in meditation. Regulate the breathing process by the yogic pranayama that will, pe that will cool down the mind. Then with the <laughs> cool mind one can meditate and thus control the mind and senses. And with intelligence, apply the mind to the gross potencies of the Lord called the Viratrupa. Now meditation will be explained how to see all these gross things as form of Supreme Lord. Then that will purify your mind. But in Kali Yuga, process to purify our mind is Shri Krishna Sankirtana. Main that we have to do, then we will get all these results. And Harinam can be done in any posture. When with disturbed mind or peaceful mind or in any condition, so merciful Krishna is. Niyamita Smaran, there are no rules and regulations, restrictions, nothing. Anytime, any place, in any condition, anyone, they can do so easy. But it is misfortune, we still don't like to do this. So we need Sadhu Sangha to always encourage us that this is the way. Tomorrow we will hear about such devotees, Sri Ramanuja Acharya and Srila Bhakti Hridoy Bongo Sai Maharaj. They are established in eternal service of Krishna, so they can inspire us to accept that our eternal function tomorrow we'll hear.